tell your neighbor a catalyst in your process. Mwambie tena, a catalyst in your process. Wonderful. A catalyst is, that is my title today, that there is, you need a catalyst in your process. And maybe to just mention what is a catalyst, a catalyst is a, anything that uh, speeds up the reaction or any, rea uh, any reaction. I know that we've gone to school, we went through the laboratories of Kenya, various places, and we reacted reagents and they reacted differently. But for the process to be more faster, you must add a catalyst, Bana Sifiwe. And there are various catalysts as, as far as the lab is concerned. But today we are not going to the lab. Today we are going to the lab of God, Bana Sifiwe. Today we are in the lab of God where we be catalyzed into another thing. And then a process is a step that is taken. A step that is taken to realize a particular result. A process. Nchakato kwa Kiswahili. This is the steps we take for us to realize something. If for us we need to have chapati which we love so much, there must be processes. Number one, twende shambani, we harvest the wheat, we take it to the factory, we make the flour. From the flour we go to the kitchen, we make some duff. From the duff again, we go to the frying pan, eventually we have the chapati, still, and we enjoy. But it is not an easy one. I see kina mama sometimes when akata jasho, they throw and they continue making the duff. And we were told while in school that even in the, uh, in the bakery, at, they even use the gambut to make it. I don't know. I've never been to the place. But today, I want us to look at uh, how to catalyze our various processes. And uh, my key scripture is Jeremiah chapter 29. And verse 11, where the Bible says, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to give you a hope in a future. The Lord God says, I know the plan that I have for you. Good plans to give you hope and future. And I've said that uh, God knows both the plan and he knows the process. He says that he knows the plan, though he has not highlighted the process for us, but he knows the process and the end result. There is our God. And the Bible says here, Kwamba, he knows. I know the process here. We have various types of processes. All of us, Kilamtu, has his different process. We have very many processes. There are very many mountains we are facing. There are very many challenges we are facing as far as life is concerned. But all those, the Bible says, God knows our plans. He has a good plan to give us a prosperous future and a great future. I've said, Ugo, that there is no plan without process. Oh, there is no end result. There is no expected future without the process. The process must be there for us to have the result you've said. And therefore, there is no expected future. There is no great future without the process. And therefore, this morning, I want to encourage as a Kwamba, the process is valid for us to be made or transformed to another thing. The process is valid for us to be transformed into another thing, into another being. So the process here pro must produce good things, uh, produce great people, excellent people, and an expected future. Though so God knows the process, he never reveals to us because the process is never easy. The process is never sweet. The process is never enjoyed. The process sometimes is bitter. But God knows it. Mambia Jirani, God knows it. Ah, tell your neighbor, that mountain, that big mountain, God knows it. God is not blind. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 59, verse number 1, 2, 3, 
that his eyes are not short-sighted. His ears are not, not too thick. He sees. Well, he is seeing the process. He's seeing the mountain that we're facing. But he says, for I know the plans I have for you, plans to give you an expected future. You might be passing through very many things in your process. You might be rejected. You might be ridiculed by people. You, be, you can become a laughing stock. That man who drives an old car. That mama that is operating a kibanda which is almost dead. That mama with a supermarket without things in the shelf. You are a laughing stock, but I want to encourage you today. It is a process. God knows. The Bible says, for I know the plans. Tell your neighbor, I know the plans that God is thinking about me. It is better. It is great. The process is never very easy. People will laugh at you. People will persecute you. Oh, these are processes. People will persecute. And even Jesus was telling his disciples, if it is persecution, I promise you, you will be persecuted for my sake. You will be persecuted, proper persecution for loving me, for caring me. Matthew chapter 10, he says, as I sent you to the, uh, to the world like ships among the wolves, expect one thing, you will not be loved 100%. Somebody will not expect to be loved by everybody. Even your smile sometimes, some people you smile and they feel bad about it. So don't expect 100% love. The process doesn't allow that. You must sometimes be rejected so that tomorrow you'll be accepted at another level. Allow that persecution today and tomorrow it shall bring another face of you. For I know the marriage I have for you, say yes, the Lord. The Lord knows the marriage. Maybe you're passing a process in the marriage. Maybe the process you're going through in the marriage is too much for you. It's too hard for you. But the Bible says, I know the plans I have for your marriage. The Bible says, um, I know the plans I have for your children. He says that I know the marriage I have given you. You've entered the marriage in a holy matrimony. And then there are no children. It is the process. You enter the marriage in a way, uh, in a pleasing way. Then you get into the marriage all over sickness and diseases. The process. Ah, you enter the marriage and you meet an absent husband. A husband that does not love you. Ah, children who abuse drugs. Those are processes. They are never sweet. But I want to encourage you that the process is not meant to destroy you. Tell your neighbor, this process is not going to destroy you. It won't destroy you in Jesus' name. Jacob, after toiling for 14 years, and he got a wife of his choice, Rachel. Again, they went in a dry period of years without children. What is this? It's still the process. But look at what God can produce out of the process. Out of the many children of Leah. Out of the many. There is no one who wiped the tears of Jacob like this one that happened with Joseph. Look at Joseph. Joseph is the one that wiped the tear of his father while in the wilderness, when in the uh, when he was sold to Egypt and he rescued the entire family to Egypt and he secured them a city uh, in the name of Goshen and tell them Joshua, uh, uh, Jacob and your family you will stay there where there is plenty, where there is food. The supply of Egypt was sufficient to Jacob when he was in his lowest. So in your process don't count it as if God has forsaken you. If Jacob could have seen like God has forsaken him, and therefore I think God could not have done what he did with him for Joseph who came in for him. Tell your neighbor the process. It's a refiner. 
the process is refining me. The process is making me better. The process is making you finer and sweeter in the name of Jesus Christ. Look at this one. Ah, we were working diligently and nobody no recognizes it. Nobody sees it. Your supervisor even is criticizing you. It is the process of God. And God knows it because he says, For I know the plans I have for you in that workplace. It is the plan to prosper and give you a future in the name of Jesus Christ. So this wonderful morning, delight in the process. The Bible says in James that delight in the persecutions. Delight in them. Be happy about them because they come to make you a better, to give you persistence. So you are dreaming so much. You have great visions. Though they are tiring, God says, I know the plans I have for you. As a young minister, you've just opened a church. Oh, you, you are trusting God to do something great. But you see you're struggling. It is the process of God. And God will not leave you until the process is over. The kish in the book of First Samuel chapter 9 and verse 1. Some of us, we might be undergoing loss. Maybe you've lost the job. Maybe you've lost a good business. Maybe you've lost a friend. Somebody has had broken you, young people. But the Bible talks about Kish, the Benjamite, who lost the donkeys. But in the process of seeking the donkeys, his son was promoted to be the first king in Israel. The process is not sweet. Losing a donkey in that time, it is like losing a whole V8. And not two, the Bible says donkeys. They were the means of transport. So he lost several of them. But one thing I love about God, in the process, he is together with you. This morning, Cornerstone Deliverance Church, the Bible, the Lord God is telling us that he is the God of the process and he will not leave you in the process. God allow the process in order to make you fully bet. Unless you want to become a half-baked Christian, you want to become a half-baked businessman, you want to become a half-baked mother, husband or wife, you want to walk out of the process and say, God, it is too much. I cannot bear it anymore. I want to live. Then you live. God intends that you be fully baked for that ministry. So keep in the process. God wants you the best wife. So keep in the process. God wants you the best leader. Don't quit. Don't say that it is too much. I've been persecuted. Nobody sees what I'm doing. I want to encourage you. The Lord God knows the process and he knows the plans. And he says, I know the good expected end that I'm going to give to you. So this morning, you need a cut list for you to undergo the process. And what is the cut list? We're going to look at various cut lists. But number one, uh, what should you do while in the process? Or oh, what should I, which gear should I engage in the cut list? Number one, number one, you must forgive people. You must forgive people. Do not allow bitterness to overwhelm you in the process. Bitterness cause your heart or your heart to bleed. And when your heart is bleeding, when the blessings come, they will not find a place to learn because of a bleeding heart. Because you want to revenge. Because you want to fight for yourself. The process does not allow. If you give yourself in the process, don't allow bitterness. In Genesis, the Bible says 45, verse number 5, Yakwamba, Joseph, I'm just paraphrasing, Joseph never, Joseph never revenged over his brothers. After the experience of the pit, his own bloody brothers, they have rejected him. They have sold him. But again, the Bible says, Joseph never revenged. He, 
he accepted them. He forgave them and he welcomed them and even blessed them. So bless those people who maybe sometimes you see like they're the one who have caused you get into the process. The supervisor that is crushing you properly. Ngombe baraka, bwana sifiwe. Huyo mume ambaye unaona kana kwamba hakupendi. Pray for him. It is the process. Don't be bitter. Bwana isa sifiwe. Don't allow bitterness. It will make you stay long in the process. And the devil takes advantage of the process. If you don't know that this process is meant to make me better, you can give room for the devil to work on you. And when he works on you, it is the time now you'll be revenging. It is the time now we'll be fighting for you. So forgive people. Don't put bitterness into you. Another thing for you to get out of the process whole and intact and strong and better is praying the word of God back to him. Pray his word. Children, the Bible says, pray to me. Ask of me. Mothers and fathers, ask of me and I'll give to you. So pray the word of God. So in the book of Psalms chapter 2, God says that verse 8, that ask of me and I'll give you people for inheritance. You are doing a business which has no customers. Instead of getting bitterness, ask God for those people to come for you. Teachers, yes, you have issues that are following you. Ask God his word. So pray the word of God back to him. And when you pray a word, the word of God back to him, you provoke him. His word, the Bible says that his word is himself. His word, the Bible says he has exalted his word above everything, even above his name. So the moment you go back to him and tell father, you've said uh, that in the name of Jesus, you give me people for my inheritance. I call for these people. They come for you. Young people, the Bible says in Isaiah uh, chapter 34 and verse number 36, the Bible says, there is, I'm just paraphrasing, if uh, I'm paraphrasing here, uh, there is no creature. The Bible says uh, in Isaiah chapter 34 verse 16 that none shall ever lack. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. The Bible says, search from the book of the Lord. That is the Bible. And read, not one of these shall fail. Number two, not one shall lack her mate. Underline that one. Young people, I encourage you. You are struggling, you don't know what to do. You are in the process and it is sometimes like feeling you're bitter. No, ask the Lord in his word. His word is yes and amen. He has said, that no creature will miss on his mat. Ask of the Lord and pin him down. And be a God, this is what you've said in your word. And I believe strongly you are God who says and does in the name of Jesus. This scripture worked for me one time ago, some five or six years. Uh, when I was still in college, a preacher came in the CU. I would encourage young people. And a preacher came to the CU. In the night, Saturday night, and then he preached on the word. He preached and then he taught us the word and told us, people, the word of God is yes and amen. The Bible says that none will miss on his met. That particular evening, or that particular, uh, that week that followed, I went and pursued to see where my mate is. And I went with the scripture and come on, be a, the Bible, you remember Pastor Joshua yesterday night, he preached and tell, told us, Yekwamba, there is no creature that will miss on his mate. And therefore I've come with this word. And from that day, today it is a story. So the Bible, pray to God in your process. Ask God, that God, I'm asking of you, your word of sin. Another thing that you must do, it is to wait on the Lord. And remain sensitive. Wait on the Lord and remain sensitive. Wait on the Lord and remain sensitive. Never lose the mark. Never lose at all. Usi how. Don't forget 
that the process is meant to give you an expected future. That is our key scripture. The expected future is to give you the desire of your heart, to make you realize the destiny, to make you live the purpose driven life, the life that God intended for you. So this wonderful morning, I want to encourage you that church, God is the God of the process. And he know the process. He know the plans for you. He is a good plan in the name of Jesus. Even us as a school, Cornerstone, let us know that it is the process. God is refining us every day. God is making good warriors every good morning. He is sharpening the arrows for the warriors to go out and hand. So let us not lose hope, Pastor um, uh, Madam Jane. Let us not lose our administrators, Mr. Kamau, uh, Mr. Saudero. Let us not lose Pastor Millicent Bwana Sefiwe. Tusikate tama, tusivunjike moyo, tusiruhus, tusisahau kwamba. It is the process. And if you realize maybe there is something that has gone wrong, can you go back to God and tell God, I come back to you. I is like I forgot I'm in the process. Forgive me and collect me and let me move with you to again. This wonderful morning, God is the God of the process. But for you to march in the process successful, yes, you must understand that you need the catalyst. We say the catalyst, you must never allow bitterness. Forgive people. They are never the one who are causing you into the process. It is not that husband. It is not that wife. It is not that child. There is the evil one, the devil. But you must understand that in this process, if I allow bitterness, I'll lose it. I will lose it. And that is the age, that is the main aim of the enemy. The main enemy. If you read in the book, uh, that Samuel, first Samuel chapter 9, down there, when you continue reading us. As Saul, they are searching for the donkey. The Bible says that the servant, uh, Saul told the servant, let us go home so that father will not even get more worse than we left him. Maybe he's worried of us. We have gone some several days. We have not got the donkeys. Let us go home. Not allow the bitterness to take us in the process. Let us not allow bitterness forgive people. If Joseph was to fight back, he could have fought back. But we've seen Joseph, when elevated from the prison, he never went searching for Potiphar's wife. He never went for it. Why? He knew it was the process. But look at the end product. Joseph enjoyed the best of perseverance. He persevered and eventually he got out with what he wanted. Don't allow bitterness. You say, I have been in these breakages. These relations have been so much. I've been broken enough. I want to quit. Don't quit. It is the process. Ask of the Lord. Don't quit that marriage. It is the process of God. And God wants the best of it. Don't leave that parent that is is feeling like it is too much in me. This school fees is too much. Yes, this is too much. I want to encourage you. Ah, I love what is happening on our children. I, you can imagine what they are doing. Can imagine singing to the Lord, praising the Lord, praying to God. That is the best thing you can give. The best inheritance you can give your child is to leave your child in cornerstone. So that apart from knowing one plus one, he knows that Jesus is the savior of the universe. Apart from knowing that when I react this chemical and the other one, he also knows uh, that God has a good plan for me. Because we are not in the, what the world sometimes we think about, uh, we think success. Now we exclude the word of God from success. We exclude the doings of God as part of success. You want your child to get an A. You want him to become a doctor. You Sometimes we forget that to tell them even to become a prayerful doctor is important. Pastor Millicent, 
you are a doctor. Blessed be the mother who took, took you to the church and told you that a doctor who will become a pastor. Bwana sifiwe. Bwana isa sifiwe. We, let us take them. Let us them be taught. Let them be molded. Let them be formed to become an arrow that shall become an arrow in the future that shall become dangerous into the kingdom of darkness. Bwana sifiwe. So, it is not in vain. I want to encourage you. Us, don't quit. Don't leave. Fight until the end. Fight until you see we have reached the end. I just imagine this Joseph, whom we read every day, the one who interpreted the dream of the king. But one time he dreamt and his, fathers, his father and mother said, you are a joker boy. How can we bow to you? And they gave even strength to their younger brothers, to their brothers, to continue torturing their brother. Because God was making Joseph a better person. So in your process, mother and father, let us be encouraged that God is inside of it. God has not left you. God is together with you and he shall bring a better end. Joseph never revenged. Never revenge. Never revenge. Some of us, we are in a position of even foregoing. The Bible, the Bible talks about uh, the year of Jubilee, whereby the year of Jubilee, one of the things that the children of Israel were celebrating is that when a date has taken too long, sometimes you forego and forget. Mtu amekaa na deni yako ya shilingi elef moja na mkikutana na ye unatema mate. Unasema wewe ni wawapi. One thousand. Now you are well, you can, you are in a position to give even ten thousand to the fella. Forgive those people and God will bless you because it is the process. Some of us, we are so bitter and sometimes even we leave, we don't come to church. Unasema hiyo kanisa sitaenda. You've forgotten it is not the church. Joseph was telling the brothers, Yakwamba, it is not you, my brothers. It is not, it is God who sent me to Egypt through you selling me so that I become a blessing to you now. So become, verse 5, anawambia tulieni. Na wanalia, wanakosa kujua kile kimefanyika, but it ilikuwa imefanyika. They had sold him. Not that they knew. Hawa kujua? They they never knew. All those who were orchestrated, God had planned them prior because he knows the plan and he knows the process. Tell your brother you're your left and your right. God knows the plan and God knows the process. Don't quit. Bwana sefiwe. Usiondoke ndoa yako. Usiondoke watoto wako mwalimu. Huyo mtoto Nui hiyo ndiye atakuwa president usimuondoke kaa karibu na yeye ni, ni, ni mchakato it is a process in the name of Jesus bwana sifiwe it is a process and god knows it so this wonderful morning i want us to know that god is inside of processes he is inside that mountain that fire you are in it is too hot the Bible says in the book of uh, Isaiah chapter 43 that for you pass through water, tell your friend water. Water has strength. To me, honor, the other day we have experienced the power of water. It swept away everything, not bridges, not houses, power of the, the floods, the power of water. The Bible says, so you pass through such a fire, such a water that is carrying the entire building. That is carrying everything. The Bible says down there, you shall not be burned. Bana You shall not, the Bible says, you will not be carried away. It shall not overflow you. Haita kugarikisha kwa kiswahili. Ya kwamba, hayo maji, hayata kusomba. Hayata kuondoa katika jina la Yesu. In that fire, that supervisor who doesn't know God, I'll in the morning go and tell God, I am bringing my supervisor to you. Bless him, dear father. Remember him. He is a great man. He is a great woman. Bless him and lift him. Promote him. God can promote him and he is no longer over you. 
Because of your prayer. Because you never threw. Ukasema ya kwamba, ahini mzito sana. So, I encourage you. On that fire, the Bible says, it will not burn you. It will not, the fire is meant to purify. The Bible says, the gold passes through the fire for purification. And this morning, I want to tell you that God is taking you through the fire to make you a better you. To make you a better mother, a better leader, a better teacher, a better father, a better leader in the name of Jesus Christ. And this morning, I want us to pray. Maybe in the process, the devil took advantage and he crushed your soul. You threw your garments. Say, I'm no longer. I better backslide. It's too much on me. I want to encourage you that God has a good plan over you. I want to encourage you. God has a better plan for you. Maybe in the process, you backslid it. Maybe in the process, you went back and you talked back bad of others or even that supervisor. You talked bad of, remember, bitterness will make you remain in the process for long. If you want to have it long, continue with bitterness. Like in this wonderful morning, I want you to go before the Lord and tell God, the process was hard. The process was heavy on me. And this wonderful morning I pray, may you forgive me. I want you to pray and tell God, oh God, my father, while seated there, oh God, uh, the process has been hard on me, but I want you to forgive me. I want you to pardon me. I want you to give me the grace again in your presence. Open your mouth and tell God, my father, in the name of Jesus, forgive me this day for I allowed bitterness. I allowed unforgiveness in my heart. I allowed it. Uh, yes, and I went back. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me. Wash me by your precious blood. Cleanse me by your precious blood. Oh God, you who is in the process, who knows the process better, this wonderful morning, how I pray, mighty Father, that in the name of Jesus Christ, uh, may you pardon me. May you forgive me for harboring bitterness. In the name of Jesus. Tell God, Oh, Father, help me to keep in the house of prayer. Because the one catalyst you've seen is a praying the word of God. I want you to tell God, uh, help me to keep in your place of prayer. Help me to keep in your place of prayer. That I will pray. That I will seek you. That I will bless you. Even in my bitter situation, uh, I will bless your name. Uh, I will remain in the house of the Lord. Uh, I will remain unsensitive. Uh, I will remain to be sensitive. Uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, Father, we thank you because you are the God of the process. You know that mama that has lost her marriage, has lost her family, has lost her children, has lost hope over her children because of drug and substance abuse. That mama, that papa that is drowning and crying because of sicknesses. The Bible says, you know the plans, have mercy on them. You have good plan for them to give them a hope and a future in the name of Jesus Christ. And Father, I pray, Almighty Father, that may you have mercy on them in the name of Jesus Christ so the Bible says that you should know that God has a good plan for us a plan to give us a future a plan to give us hope in the name of Jesus Christ so your mountains are easily threshed your mountains are easily brought down because you remain focused because you are sensitive uh, are you praying to God uh, and telling God uh, this is my time uh, remember me so your mountain is easily moved and removed uh, because you know how to wait on his systems wait on him and he shall do it maybe you are there and you've been in a process and you feel like it has been too much you feel like quitting you feel like running away you feel like taking away your life. I want you to know that this wonderful morning, 
The Lord God shall have mercy on you. The Lord God is inside your process. The Lord God has never forsaken you. That business will kick again. That marriage will be restored again. That family will be refurbished again. Will be made new. Because God, he knows the plans he has for us. He knows the plan. You are there and you are saying that the process was too hard for me. And I want prayers. I would like you to just lift your hands up, uh, your hand up, uh, and the usher will come next to you and will pray with you that the process will be easy. The process uh, you'll be able to go through in the name of Jesus Christ. Um, just lift your hands if you're there. You feel the process has been too much. You feel that you cannot anymore. Just lift your hand. Yeah, there is a hand there lifted. I request ashes sensitive. Just go where they are and pray with them. In the name of Jesus. Father, just lift your hand up. Don't fear. God is a God of mercy. He's hearing and listening to you. In the name of Jesus. Let's pray. Abba, Father and King of glory. This wonderful morning. In the name of Jesus. You've told us the process. You know how. It goes, you know the process and the end product. And this morning, we pray in the name of Jesus that that mama that is lifting the hand, that father that is having situations and the process is hard on them, may you have mercy on them. May you fight for them. May you release your hand upon them. Bible says in Luke chapter 4 verse 18, that the spirit of God is over me. The spirit of God is over me. Yes, to preach the gospel to the poor, to those who are broken hearted. And this morning I pray, every broken hearted soul, you are mending it this morning. Yes, you are mending that soul. You are mending that heart of that mama that was crying, of that father that was crying. May you mend that heart. May you heal them, dear master, because you have a good plan for us, not to destroy us, not to kill us, not to finish us, but to give us a hope in the future. Oh, my Mighty and marvelous Father, we thank you and we bless you. May you take us through, give us victory in the process that we are going through for your glory and honor. In Jesus' name, we pray, trust, and believe. Amen. You